though, man. I'm always, uh, I'm, a, I'm also a big believer in baptism by fire, you know. So, I mean, that's actually the best type of initiations that you can have uh, because you will never be fully ready for it. You know? So there's no real safe way of practicing this stuff. Yeah. It's basically, you just got to push yourself forward. You got to be okay with being terrified a little bit. And you will be. Like, each new level is going to terrify you. I mean, um, there are some scary motherfuckers out there. And not, I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about spirits, you know. And they, if you open yourself up like that, they will try to like mess with you a little bit. Not that they take and turn you crazy because that's, I'm actually, I don't lose my mind. I really don't. I really don't. But I can feel the influence of that thing. And that's fucking, that's disgusting. It's, it's terrifying because you feel violated, really, really violated, you know? And it's, it's, you know, almost as if you're being sexually violated. It's a very, very intimate space and you feel like, so somebody's there you know, that's not supposed to be there and it's just not a good influence you know and uh by the way substance abuse leads to that a lot you know a lot of people that are you know drunk alcohol leads to like very very frequently people get influenced but i mean there's a reason why people do all of this fuck up shit when they're drunk you know i'm not talking about getting into fights i'm talking about like you we all know what happens when people get drunk it's like the weirdest shit that people do it's disgusting but um yeah so Understand. I can, this, oh, understand this universe is, is a vibrational thing and when you when you when you change your vibration through the spirit of alcohol you will uh you will attract visitors like that you know and uh but i mean baptism by fire means go and be brave that's basically what i can tell people or that 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 will be my advice go and be brave go and be brave you know, I mean, obviously, if you are meant to do this, you you don't got a choice anyways, okay? You're going to live a, you're going to either go crazy in this world, or in a mundane environment that, that, that just doesn't talk about all these experiences that you have, all these sensations, you know, you, you, you know, there's something else, you're being called towards it, but uh, you can't do it. You're going to live a miserable life, or you go into this adventure. You know, and this is going to be a lot. Magic is going to open up to you once magic has become your 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 way of living. Everybody has a way of living. Look, I I, I strongly believe in these archetypes, right? I think I mentioned that before. I really believe in archetypes that 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 we all represent. There are warriors. There are kings. There are you know there are no accountants. <laughs> That's not an archetype. <laughs> there are no there are no uh, Burger flippers or whatever the fuck people do. Okay, the, 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 these these archetypes do not exist. They're part of modern society, which has nothing to do with our with our heritage, right? So there are these archetypes that are present in all tribes. And there's the shaman, the magician. And unless he becomes a shaman magician, first of all, he's not even living. You know, life's not living, not not worth living for him unless he does it. And you know, he doesn't have a choice anyways. Plus. You know, I'm I'm definitely not Christian, right? But there's a saying that God only gives you those challenges that you're that you have the ability to overcome, right? And it's a and let's say let's replace universe with God or God with universe, right? So the universe only gives you the challenges that that you can that are there for you to take you to the next level. Now, there's a bigger game going on. There's a much bigger game going on. Now, it doesn't mean that the universe revolves around you. No. But to the extent that you connect to it, yes, it does. That's the funny part. Because you're now aligning yourself with a greater mind. You know, in, in Zen Buddhism, they speak of the of the smaller mind, which is our ego, and the greater mind. And Carl was speaking about that connection earlier. I interpret it in that sense, where you, where you listen to the energy. You drop your mind and you live through your body. And the body is what, what this energy in this universe communicates through. You know? It's a greater intelligence that, that, that rules everything. And when you can connect to that and let that guide you, you are safe. You're protected by the universe. And there, there's no spirit that can, that can mess with that. No person, obviously, either. Right. Yeah, humans are quite a joke. But anyway, yeah, you wanted to say something? You know, it's interesting. You know, you bring up uh, 
the effects of uh, using substances, right? So I have lots of experience with this in the past, right? And I know that now what happens, uh, alcohol is a good example. We can say if you put alcohol in your system and you get to the point where you're blackout, which is uh, an unconscious state, and what happens is your your aura gets holes in them, mm-hmm. and uh, you and and then other spirits, which um, a lot of times their karmic structures match that vibration you're putting out, and they come in and they want to experience their old experience that they're you know still stuck in through your body. So a lot of times, like this will happen. Like let's just say a husband and a wife are like arguing in their kitchen, right? And then, but he's been drinking and then there's a spirit that's hanging around there somewhere in that neighborhood. That's an old drunk who's violent. Right. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, hell yeah, he slips in there. And now that guy knocks his wife out. Right. And and blackens her (laughs) eye and and does a bunch of stuff that normally he might not go that far. Right. But Mm -hmm. because he was susceptible to an outside for, and then the next day he's like, I can't, what happened? Like, I don't know why I did that. And, there's a million and millions of different circumstances similar to that, not to mention harder drugs, which take a whole different uh, thing. Right. And what I've, I mean, maybe it's just me, but I'm sure there's other people that are on this path that have had experiences um, with substances, because I think what happens is either they don't know they're a shaman or a sorcerer yet, or they're resisting it. So subconsciously they're still trying to experience something greater than this mundane 3d and the only way they know how to do that is to put a substance <clears throat> in their body because they're getting a temporary experience that is more intense and more alive than the lame nine to five work thing, right? And so I get it. Fundamentally, their intention is not wrong. They just are doing it the wrong way. You know what I mean? And that's, I, I do feel for people because I feel like they're, they can't see that there is a way to do that naturally without the negative consequences. So, um, but th- there's so many complications with that, right? It's a, that could be a whole discussion in itself. Um, but anybody who's watched this, I can tell you, you want to get high every day. You can do it naturally with your own energy, with your own breath. You can keep stay like that all day and not have any negative effects and be totally conscious and, um, uh, in control. You know what I mean? And then you won't have to rely on, you never want to rely on something outside of yourself, um, mm-hmm. to bring you any kind of satisfaction. I'm not saying there's anything, I'm not, this is not a moral thing to me. I don't care. You know, you do it. People can do whatever the hell they want. You know what I mean? But I can just tell you from my personal experience and my pain and suffering (laughs) that it's much better to create that chemistry in your own system. Your brain, our brain is the most, uh, is the largest pharmaceutical factory on the planet. You know, as far as I know, I mean, so any substance that they can cook up in a lab or grow, oh, excuse me, and whatever they can do, yeah. we can we can generate it. We can experience it. The the whole system of of different uh, systems of yoga they they have kriyas that bring you to those states, right? Then there's um, you know um, you know you get into qigong. They have whole different systems of qigong where you move the chi and you master it, and you can activate all kinds of different states of the mind. And then the mid- magician from my experience learns how to do that with just his mind alone right without even having to do postures and certain things uh if you've learned how to master your own energies to a certain point you can literally close your eyes and say okay i want to turn on ecstasy right now like a switch and your brain will activate if you've trained yourself properly and you've had um you know the right guidance you can do it. I do it now. I can do it. The thing is, is, I can't prove it to you, right? I, I, had, I don't have a meter to show you this, but I can tell you, I can do this to myself. If I want to turn on, um, it's kind of like uh, listening to music. I always tell people who have a hard time understanding it. Like you're listening to classical music. It's going to turn, you know, you're going to have different um, uh, chemicals and hormones release due to the classical music, right? It's going to make you feel a certain way. So what happens when you switch on heavy metal, right? Boom, a whole different set of chemical reactions are happening because of the and, and the energies are happening, right? And then what happens, you know, so and that can go on and on and on. However, if the music can do do it to you, why can't you just do that to yourself? You know, one of the things that I've learned in my practice is 
if you've had an experience, it's now in your memory permanently and you can recreate that experience to its full um, potential if you allow yourself to experience it. Yeah. Um, uh, on the same note, as you're saying that, um, I believe the contrast is also very important. Uh, and that's why I'm really about intentionally, intentional discomfort and intentionally creating discomfort in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Could be, um, yeah, cold showers, for instance. Could be even just exercises is, is intentional uh, discomfort. So um, we also need phases of, 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 of an ascetic lifestyle or basically uh, deny ourselves ourselves all all pleasures or as much as we can and that then uh renews our taste for for all of that right it, 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 it renews our taste buds i believe that's an important part as well but yeah absolutely the um the problem is not the lack of saturation or the lack of, of, of pleasure i believe in this world i think we're oversaturated with it in a lot of ways you know uh from the sugars, from you know the foods, all that stuff. It's a little bit too much. So life is experienced in the moments of, of, of uh, I don't know. It's a, it's it's you know that's even a yogic uh, principle. You know, uh, don't overindulge in things. Do everything uh, well measured, and uh, that also keeps the consciousness clear and clean because. In order to receive clear messages, the, the the system has to be has to be undistracted with processing, let's say, food and other things, right? Mm -hmm. So, the better we were able to, to to keep the system as a good receptor, the better the messages that are going to come through. And uh, that is true ecstasy, you know. Not, a sugar high is nothing compared to to the feeling of being connected to the universe and being able to go there whenever I mean, there's always going to be stressful. There's always, there's always going to be things that, you know, uh, you know, and I mean, when it, when it comes to addictions or substance abuse, people always feel this pull towards it or they're, they're feeling pushed towards it. Um, which is interesting. Even, even spirits acting around them so that they get them to drink again, or that they get them to take drugs again. Right. And, uh, you know, knowing that you can go there every time you want. You know, oh, something happened today, it's not a problem. I don't have to drink. I'm just going to... I guarantee you, people did that instead. Like, How many people go, come home after work and, and have a drink or two, right? Or go to a bar. If, it, if they instead were to do 30 minutes of yoga and meditate another 20 minutes, they would not need the alcohol. Because what they're looking for is, uh, is, is, is harmony. What they're looking for is peace. Yeah. I think I heard somebody say this. They said the guy who goes to the bar and the guy who goes to the church or the temple are searching for the same thing. They're just going about it in different ways, right? Hmm. And um, But I think That's what you deep. were saying is that the denial of the pleasures I think, honestly, that is a requirement if you want to be able to activate these states of consciousness on your own. The prior requirement is to, first of all, deny and master your system and bring it to a certain level of control and mastery, you know, bef before your system is going to be functioning to that kind of a level. Because anybody who can turn that on has knows, you know, knows a few things, you know, and is able to understand that. But without the discipline, without the practice, um, you're not going to get to that point. I don't think, you know, I don't, I can't say that for sure. There might be some ways, but I just know that you look at any system out there, whether it's, um, you know, a yogic system, uh, um, you know, Buddhism, or even, even um, the shamanic uh, cultures around the world, they all have to go through some kind of extreme discomfort before they get the higher, experience of life right um 